Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Joel Anthony and I am here with the one and only Robert Anthony. And together we are living with Rob. The most attractive couple on the internet. Nah. Hey, you want an Oreo? Uh, sure. Really? I was thinking you would say no, so I didn't want to share. I don't want the people to know that I would All right, say have no. an Oreo. Let's have Oreos and coffee. Thanks okay. to my mother. All right. Hey, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. This is our Valentine's Day message, and I have a couple of thoughts as it relates to Valentine's Day that I just feel compelled to share with you our subscribers and our viewers and I think that you're gonna love what I have to say and I'll explain why grab a cup of coffee we're gonna make this short or cup of tea whatever you oh, drink that's good for those of you that don't know I have spent my or had spent my entire lifetime in the retail flower business and uh, from the time I was seven years old little tiny guy I was stripping and wiring roses at my dad's flower shop in the basement it was such a dump in such a dungeon it was just crazy and it would be flooded with water we'd be traversing through water all the holidays and everything so uh, a lot of fond memories though I look back with a lot of fond memories of growing up in that flower shop and very much like the Bob's Burgers parody on small business and it was great but I grew up in this business and uh, this is going to be literally my very first Valentine's Day Sands Flower Shop. It's it's great. It's February 12th right now. Is that right? The 12th? Yeah. It's the 11th. 11th. February 11th right now. We would be hip deep in it right now getting mm -hmm. ready for the holiday. Not so much. We are not so much in it right now and it's great. And I sold it, got rid of the flower shop. We, we went through one last Valentine's Day in 2023 and we sold it and closed on the sale of the business i believe it was the 21st of february wow. and i was done with the retail flower business after really 44 years of working in it but really working in it about 38 years i owned um two different flower shops i ran my grandfather's flower shop and i worked for my dad for lots of years but valentine's day is the super bowl ironically this is super bowl weekend here where we're at in california and super bowl weekend in america and so the flower business is one that revolves around valentine's day and mother's day so it's a little weird but living on the road full time has distanced us from that um, and we're no less sentimental about it but i can't tell you how good it feels to not be part of doing that whole nonsense and that whole madness we call Valentine's Day. We were talking uh, next year we're thinking we'll do uh, maybe go to a flower shop and offer to help for a few weeks for the holiday because they can always use good help. That's a thing in the business, you know? Yeah, we're going to go back to work for the nonsense but not be in charge of the right, nonsense. That's right. Yeah, we can offer a lot from leadership coaching, whatever, and it's really, really exciting. But I was thinking today, and this is going to give you some, uh, some relational advice. You see, one of the things things about being a florist is you are dealing with emotions of people constantly. Every purchase in the flower business, every one is made from the perspective of an emotional event. Let me give you a few examples. You've got the birth of a baby. You've got the guy that wants sex and is trying to date the girl. You've got the wedding flowers that celebrate the biggest day of the year for both the bride and the groom, but primarily for the bride. You've got anniversaries, you've got get out of the doghouse, you've got um, sympathy, the loss of a loved one. You know, the florist is there with you from the day that you're born until the day that you die. Yeah. So it's a privilege to be in the flower business and in some respects, for that reason, I, I sort of miss it. But in other respects, this whole living on the road full time thing has really put into perspective for me. Um, and I think for Joel, what really is important. And so, you know, relationships are really important. And so today, uh, we watch Church Online, and the pastor was given a message, and of course, it's about, they're, they're in the series about uh, sex and marriage, and, and it was talking a lot about uh, not getting divorced uh, based on Corinthians, right? And so, throughout the process in the passage, 
And this is where here comes here comes here comes the Valentine's Day advice for all of you in relationships that are out there. I know that you're going to appreciate this. I promise you will appreciate this. And I speak from significant levels of expertise and experience watching thousands of couples evolve in relationships over the course of my floristry history. Okay, so that's that's the premise here. All right, so just so we can establish me as an expert. All right, ready? Okay, here we go. Because this is what happened in the message today. So the pastor is talking about um, building a successful marriage and, and how to do that. And I'm not going to get into all the details. True to form, because we're at Valentine's Day, you got to start taking a swipe at the Hallmark holidays. You know, I'm not one that participates in the Hallmark holidays. You know, get the card, get the flowers, blah, you know, marginalizing flowers. Now, I've delivered flowers and I've got a book in the works called Men Want Sex, Women Want Flowers. You do the math. I know what I'm talking about. You go out and deliver flowers for a week with me and you will see just how valuable flowers are to the female, to any woman, right? So the pastor goes on and talks about kind of devaluing flowers, but if you really, really, really want to bless your wife, you know, this is what we're going to do in my house for Valentine's Day. We're going to sit down and we're going to pray over my wife and we're going to tell Jesus the 10 most valuable things that we see our wife for and we're going to pray about it and we're going to give it to the Lord and then he made a comment about how you know and then you're not having to spend a lot of money spoken like a true cheapskate bottom line you're a cheapskate and you're covering it up and I'm going to pray and give you a bunch of good words with the Lord so we're going to be righteous in his eyes so in joking about this okay I'm, I'm joking some okay this is the model that I've seen often in the church cheap now most men will immediately go back to getting flowers after all of their attempts to be cheap don't work with their wife. And who do they call? They call the florist to try to fix things to get out of the doghouse. That's the truth, because I've watched it mm -hmm. for 38 years, okay? So you can try all your cheap stuff all you want, and you can try to marginalize flowers all you want, but the fact of the matter is, is flowers work. And I'm gonna talk about love languages a little bit. So my love language is words of affirmation. Her love language is gifts and some quality time, but mostly gifting is what her love language is. So if your wife's love language is words of affirmation, she will appreciate, more than likely, your attempts to be cheap. And that meaning, I'm gonna sit and, and talk with you via prayer about all of the things I appreciate. For her love language is words of affirmation, that's gonna work out great for you. It's gonna work out great for her. But if her love language is gifts, or acts of service or any of those other things that's going to fall on deaf ears and you know what she's going to think yeah you're just a cheapskate that's all it boils down to sure i'll go along with you but you're just a cheapskate so don't do that i'm going to give you another quick piece of advice that i give every man that comes into the flower shop and bitches and complains about the fact that roses are so expensive at valentine's day if you don't like spending a whole bunch of money on flowers at valentine's day because they are outrageously expensive i'm not going to deny that you know you can't believe the prices the florist has to pay for roses compared to what they normally pay if you send flowers not because you're in trouble not because it's her birthday not because it's her anniversary but four times a year once a quarter if you sent flowers for nothing other than to say I love you I appreciate you I think you're the greatest thing that's ever happened to me you're off the hook for Valentine's Day I promise you, there will be no question about the fact that you didn't spend money on flowers for Valentine's Day, and instead you will have earned so much goodwill over the course of the year because you bought flowers when you did not need to, men. I want you to hear that. When you did not need to. Not Mother's Day, not Valentine's Day, not anniversary, not birthday, none of that. You can revel in glory in your cheapskatedness and not have to buy it when the flowers are the most expensive. And instead, you're telling her, I was actually thinking about you today for no other reason than I was thinking about you. There's nothing behind it other than I was thinking about you. You want to get better sex? You want to have a great sex life? Start thinking about your wife in those terms. I promise you, speaking as a florist that knows these things, that's the magic. I have talked to hundreds of women. 
out in the field delivering flowers and the majority of them will attest to this very fact. If you're sending flowers because you have to, you're doing it out of obligation. If you're sending flowers because you have no other reason than to say, today you were on my mind, that woman will be yours for life and you will have a better sex life than most of the rest of us on the planet. Guaranteed. I promise you that. That is a fact. So pretty much send the flowers just because. Yeah. So happy Valentine's Day to you. And I hope that it inspires you to maybe rethink the way that you're doing things and quite frankly, not be that guy. Let me ask you a question. Girl. Would you like it if I said, you know what we're going to do for Christmas this year? We're going to sit around the fire and we're going to pray over you and lay hands on you and well, tell Jesus all of the things that we appreciate about you and how you're a gift to us. Would, would you like that? It depends on my mood. Okay. Depends. So. Depends how the intensity of it, you know. What do you mean? Like speaking in tongues praying? No, I just, I don't know. For me, it will depend on my mood. I think if it's done. And, and you get and, no other gifts. You get no other I gifts. Mean, That's your gift. You're saying that, yeah, that seems like it'd be good. I mean, I mean, I, I think personally that should be like on a regular basis just because you want to as well. It shouldn't be, well, here is your gift. <laughs> this is your gift. I think out of the blue, if I came out of the shower one day. You'd hey. be naked. <laughs> I'd like right. that part. Should not have went. I'd like it if you came I out of the shower. I should not have went there. No, I like it if you come out of the shower, like what you just did, naked and said, hey. And you can put your hands all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lay hands Lesson. on me now, right? Yeah. <laughs> How you like me now? <laughs> but that's I'm a... I'm an now. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Everybody's different. Hey, thanks for being here. We're going to call this good. That was all we wanted to say to you. I hope that you're having a great week. Super Valentine's Day. We will see you in the next one. I'm Rob. Joelle. I'm out. Bye.